Hey, what's up guys? Today I wanted to do a video about whether or not uh, smartphones are going to kill uh, traditional camera systems. And I think that there's two main possible scenarios to look at here. And I think it's easy to get caught up on current trends and to think that that's the way the uh, future is going to turn out. However, I don't think that that's, uh, you know, necessarily a good predictor and, uh, you know, future technologies are going to be the main decider. What the camera companies decide to do with their products is going to play a huge role in this. So I think that there's two main scenarios to look at. I think the first scenario is that the cell phone has already killed the uh, compact uh, camera segment and that's the mass market that you know most people would belong to leaving only the prof uh, professionals and the enthusiast cameras to choose from at this point I think the other possibility to consider is that if uh, camera companies will uh, a continue to concentrate on the professional market worrying about uh, image quality uh, maybe concentrating on medium format for example uh, and then also simultaneously uh, bringing uh, all the advancements in the uh, cell phone technology into a compact camera segment using uh, you know advancements like uh, computational photography and uh, touch screen interfaces and being able to bring about the user experience of the cell phone into a entry level camera that can do everything in camera instead of relying on bring it, bringing images into post processing and using the old school workflow that uh, you have to use when you're using a professional style camera. If you can do everything in the camera uh, and basically um, you know get out images that look very similar to what you might get out of a pr more professional camera then it's possible to bring that segment back. Now cell phone cameras have come a long way in the last five years or so and uh, they're going to improve a whole lot more in the next five or ten years and uh, part of that is just advances in technology and improvements in image sensors and stuff like that and, but then there's also uh, a huge uh, boom in that sector of what you, they call in the uh, field computational photography and uh, you, you've probably seen some of that in uh, like for example fake bokeh effect uh, on some of the newer uh, cell phone cameras and uh, you know they have denoise uh, you know parameters that basically go in and fix noise problems uh, basically all the shortcomings of the smaller sensor are they, they're working on overcoming so I think to truly understand this, you got to look at the uh, history of the cell phone camera. And uh, whenever the smartphones first started coming out and they put the cameras in them, uh, the, you know, they were using the smallest image sensors that had ever been used uh, for a digital camera. Yeah, these sensors are not much larger than a couple grains of rice. And the lenses that they're putting on them are also very small uh, in order to fit into the cell phone package. And so initially the cameras were not much more than a novelty. Uh, the quality was horrendous. And, uh, but, uh, you know, they wanted to improve the cameras within that architecture and that size. So they set about to do that. And in doing that, you got to understand those lenses let in such a small amount of light that it, it can be difficult for those sensors and then on top of it the sensor itself is not very big so that creates a whole bunch of problems as far as gathering light uh, capability which increases noise and uh, the quality is not very good etc now through the years they've been able to improve the uh, quality and the resolution on these small sensors and uh, then now they have started in on computational photography in order to be able to overcome the problems of low light, the noise. They uh, have anti-noise uh, algorithms that they're using to improve the uh, percepted image quality. And then also they are using things like fake bokeh in order to you know, give it a more professional look uh, in a small package. So basically every shortcoming that they had for those really small sensors are being overcome slowly. 
and some of those improvements are being used in dedicated cameras now and they're you know slowly moving to that um, you know especially in the uh, smaller mirrorless um, like micro four-thirds sensors and stuff like that that's where you're going to see the biggest uh, leaps in that technology because they suffer from some of the same issues so it's a natural fit for them to use those same advancements to help improve uh, the quality of, the, uh, of those smaller mirrorless cameras as well. So I think it's pretty safe to say that the mass market has already, if not, they will be abandoning completely uh, standalone cameras in the very near future, which does spell trouble for some of the camera companies because a lot of their profit margins are based on the mass market. Uh, and then they use that to help improve their prosumer and professional cameras. Uh, so I look for that to become a problem for the camera companies in the near future. But I would say that uh, pretty much, uh, you know, the end of the uh, dedicated camera is already here for most people. So I think what you're going to see is, you know, basically what's coming true already is that, uh, you know, only you know, professionals and enthusiasts are going to be camp carrying uh, dedicated camera systems around. Uh, the quality would have to be significantly better than what you get out of your cell phone. So I think that they're going to continue to concentrate on higher, higher quality images out of uh, traditional cameras. So I mean, you know, I look for more uh, me medium format cameras. Uh, and that sort of thing. I expect the price will drop on those a good bit. They'll probably come down in size a little bit and still retain the large image sensor and such. Uh, so I hope that that's where they're going to go and I think that they will. Um, you know, I think that the days of, you know, compact cameras that are not much better than your cell phone are pretty much over at this point. Uh, you know, give it another couple years and I think that most manufacturers will stop doing those. And uh, so anyway, guys, I do, I would say that the uh, cell phone cameras are, you know, going to win this battle. And, uh, you know, so expect that in a few years, you won't see too many traditional cameras around. Now, I wanted to go over the way that computational photography is changing the uh, camera industry. And I wanted to start with mentioning that some of these uh, functions have been around for quite a while but were usually done in post-processing so you would shoot you know keep, keep all your files take them into the computer and then work on them from there sometimes you had to take 10 shots you know etc cetera, etc cetera. but it requires a lot of processing power in order to get these uh, things done and previously it wasn't possible to really put that much uh, processing power into the camera itself um, now with the uh, cell phones and everything uh, because of the uh, small sensor and uh, small lens and that sort of thing they found it necessary to try to use computational photography to overcome the limitations of the medium so they started taking advantage of the processing power t of the uh, smartphone to be able to incorporate these processes in camera and make the experience uh, seamless for the user. And that was sort of a perfect placement for that technology to uh, really start to come together and to solidify it, uh, improve it, that sort of thing. So now that they've done a lot of the uh, you know initial work and everything in the in the process they are now able to start to incorporate that into you know the uh, camera systems and um, you know the 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 large sensor cameras you know need it the least and you know those are special built tools that professionals are going to you know bring those files into the computer anyway so the most likely uh, scenario that you're gonna see moving forward is for them to put them into you know small sensor uh, cameras uh, you know that are more consumer based that are more likely to be carried by the uh, you know general population going forward so yeah if they can successfully implement some of these computational photography uh, aspects into the uh, 
you know, smaller sensor cameras on the market, it might be possible to pull back some of the customers that have uh, since, uh, you know, pulled away to just having smartphones only. And again, it's a perfect fit because of the uh, physical limitations of the smaller sensor and smaller lenses to take advantage of these to uh, overcome the uh, limitations of the, of the hardware. And I would say that moving forward, you know, uh, added computational uh, ability into the camera is going to be cheaper than actually uh, putting good hardware into a camera. So I think that, you know, they'll continue to try to use, you know, slower lenses, smaller sensors, stuff like that, and instead start relying more on computational photography. And I think that that's where, uh, you know, the lower end of the camera market will go because it will be exponentially cheaper in the long run to, uh, to you know, take advantage of the computational photography and instead of, you know, upping the cost by improving the uh, physical hardware. So I think that the process of using uh, all these functions in build into like a single camera system uh, is much more of, you know, a workflow that people have come to know and expect, uh, especially uh, younger generations and stuff like that. So I think also that this addresses some of the archaic nature of the, uh, you know, old workflow of, you know, uh, memory cards and importing and, you know, backing up files and all that. I think that, you know, the younger generations have, you know, grown up with the cell phone, you know, and that sort of thing. And they've learned their photography in that realm. And I think that, you know, being able to incorporate all this into the camera system itself is a smart move for the manufacturers as far as, you know, uh, uh, keeping a more user-friendly workflow uh, going forward. A lot of people don't have the... Uh, um, mentality to you know import all these files and do these like uh, high dynamic range images or lighting simulations and stuff like that they want to be able to basically take the uh, photo hit a button and it, it adds like a fake bokeh effect for example and just be done with the image they don't want to have to do all that extra work and i think moving forward the entry level camera segment will uh you know begin to move in that direction uh, to bring the user experience a little closer to what they find with uh, cell phones. Despite all the advancements in the computational photography field and the improvement of smartphone photography, the benefits that come with a professional grade photography system will not become outdated anytime soon. Utilizing professional quality lenses, sensors, and a streamlined shooting interface, these systems are purpose-built tools for people who need a completely reliable and easily manipulated interface. This market segment will be the slowest to adopt the newest high-tech equipment and will ensure that pure photo equipment exists well into the future. But it's the consumer camera segment you really have to wonder about and that which poses the biggest threat to the camera companies. Without a rapid advancement in the compact camera segment, I would expect some companies to merge and some to die out. I advise everyone to choose your purchases wisely and to try to support the companies that are moving in a direction you agree with. Without your support, these companies will cease to exist and the industry will suffer. I hope this video gives you some things to think about and that it helps you somehow. Take care, guys.